The unfriendly countries of Moscow are looking forward to replace Russian gas with U.S. and Qatari ones. The main question now, could the U.S. and Qatar replace the Russian energy products? Uh, no, the simple uh, answer is no, not now, not in the future, because there are certain physical, economic things which people don't think about when it comes to these uh, questions. There is, there is a wishful thinking that the United States and Qatar will replace Russia in terms of the imports. Russia exports around 155 billion cubic meters of natural gas to Europe, mostly through pipelines. Now, pipelines are more efficient and carry much more volume of, uh, of natural gas than uh, ships do with liquefied natural gas, which also costs very much. If you look at the United States exports to the world and Qatar's exports to the world, which is much less than what uh, Russia is exporting to, to Europe, uh, most of it goes actually not to Europe. It goes to Japan, Korea, China, India. So even if Qatar and the United States decide to throw all those countries who are their friends and trade partners under the bus, that even that would not help. Of course, that's an impossibility. The United States' major export market is not Europe. It is Mexico, number one. It exports almost 39% of its natural gas to Mexico and uh, about 20% of its natural gas to Canada by pipelines. The rest, it exports as liquefied natural gas to other countries. Now, if you cut the gas to Mexico, for example, and you have a total nightmare in Mexico. Imagine how many millions of refugees you will have, you know, coming to the United States. This is not uh, the right policy. It's not economical. It's not scientific. It's not uh, morally uh, fit. So I don't think Qatar and the United States will take the decision to throw Japan, South Korea, India, and other countries whom they consider their allies under the bus for the sake of saving this situation. All other uh, alternatives are long-term alternatives. They will not help. The solution today is, is, as I said, go back to the negotiations. Europe should support the negotiations. The trade and economic cooperation with Russia should continue. We have something called the Belt and Road Initiative, which Europe is actually very much dependent on. We had, since the start of the, the, uh, the conflict, most of the rail freight, which is very crucial for European industry industries and also for exporting to China, these railways have been blocked, not by physical uh, damage, but by the EU sanctions and the refusal of EU of using the Belarus and Russian railway networks, which are the only mm -hmm. way to go to China. Perfectly. So I think a solution should include uh, to integrate Ukraine itself into the Belt and Road Initiative, making Ukraine a bridge between Asia, uh, uh, South West Asia, West Asia, and Europe, instead of Ukraine becoming a wall, a new Berlin wall, to block cooperation between East and West. Europe should wake up today. We will have a major economic disaster. We are already witnessing the effects of it, but politicians are telling the people, you have to endure the difficulties because we are fighting for freedom, and so on and so forth. This is not going to work. We will have a massive Perfect. economic depression in Europe, which will affect the whole world. Quite